I never really felt like I was anything like I'm sorry. I never felt like I was like really special or anything like that. I just was doing something that I really loved to do and that was just dance because I had never been a part of anything like that before in my life. I'm Aretha Jackson and I was a soul trained dancer from 1977 to 1986. I was born in Kansas City, Missouri. My mother and father raised eight children and I am number seven. We all just lived together. My mother worked as a seamstress and my father worked as a master painter. He actually painted cars for movies. My inspiration from dancing came from my mother. My mother used to do jitterbug contests when she was younger. And when she was pregnant with me, she used to always tell me that she knew that I was going to be a dancer because every time music would play, I would start moving inside of her. As soon as I got to the age to where she could put me in classes, I started dancing at the Evelyn Woods Dance Studios. In junior high school, I started attending a theatrical school called Carnes Theater. I started sewing with my mom. Everyone in my family sews, but I sew more than anyone else because I was younger and I was there with my mother more. I also trained at the theatrical school. Of course, they had costuming. They knew I could sew. So they put me in the costume shop as well as dancing. So I had a lot of experience there also. I had never liked Kansas City, even as a child. One day I just flipped a coin and said, I'm going to Los Angeles or I'm going to New York. And Los Angeles won. So I came to Los Angeles with some friends of mine. I enrolled at LA Trade Tech and I was going to school there full time. And then I was working downtown in the fashion district and then I got a job working for a couple of designers, sewing clothes. The first album cover that you see for LTD, every outfit on there, I made those. How I got into Soul Train was from the college, I used to go to the Red Onion up on Wilshire Boulevard because that's where the young people would go and dance. Someone came up to me and said, you're a great dancer, do you dance on Soul Train? And I was like, no, but I wish I did, <laughs> you know. And he goes, oh, well, you know, they're taping this weekend. If you want to come, I'll tell you where it is and you can meet me up there and I'll get you in. So I went there. It was about three to 400 people trying to get in. And of course, the guy that invited me to come never showed up. So I just kind of like stood in the back of the patio and I just watched all the people that I saw on television. When they opened the doors, it was, as I know now, Chuck Johnson. He was just selecting certain people to come into the studio. And I was just standing there watching because I was like, I'm never going to get in here. But he reached up over the crowd and he goes, you can come in. And I was looking around and he goes, no, you, looking around. He says, I'm talking to you. And I was like, me? And he was like, yeah, you can come in. I was like in the back, so everybody had to move, like kind of move out the way so I could go down to the door, you know. It was very exciting because I had been watching the show since it was in Chicago. We watched it every Saturday morning. To be there and see those people actually dancing on stage in person was very exciting to me. But when I got in there, I was really kind of flabbergasted. So I sat with the dancers set when they were resting and I sat there for six hours. I never got to dance because nobody knew me, nobody asked me to dance, and I didn't know the protocols of the studio. I had never been in a studio before. And then this gentleman came over to me and said, you've been sitting here a long time, why are you here? 
And I said, well, I don't know anyone, and no one has asked me to dance, and I don't know the protocols of the show in the studio. He said, okay, well, on the next song, I'm going to come over, and I'm going to dance with you if you'd like to dance. And I said, I, I most certainly would love to dance. As soon as that record was over, Chuck Johnson came up to me, and he said, Don likes the way that you dance, and Miss Aretha, we would like for you to dance with this gentleman up there on the stage. And that happened to be Larry Jaffries, better known as Bobcat, who has always been my partner. I did the Scrabble board the very first day that I came on the show when they asked me to dance with Bobcat. After the next song or so, they did the Scrabble board, and there I was. And let's meet two of our Soul Train dancers. Hi, Yannick. Aretha Jackson. Aretha. Bobcat. I made the majority of all the clothing that I wore on the show. I would go through the fabric, because I always keep a stash of fabric in my house, and see what it said to me. And then that's what I could see it in my mind. And then I would just make it. I like my black and gold fringe outfit. I thought it was very pretty. I also like this pink dress that I made. It was like a tube dress and it had the flare around the bottom. And I had stitched uh, some large sequins onto it all over the fabric. I really like that because it shaped me and then it danced me at the same time. Dancers on the show that I made clothes for on a regular basis was Crystal McCary and Diana Shearer. For Crystal, the baby blue outfit with the pink bow tie and the waist thing, I, yes, I did that for Crystal. She also wore the red jumpsuit with the off the shoulder and she wore it with a bolero hat. That is one of my outfits. Diana wears the one outfit, the blue and white with the fringe coming down that she said was her favorite outfit in her interview. I made that outfit. The black one that she wore with the straps up here, that was one of my outfits. The black bodysuit with the silver fringe uh, hanging down the front, that was one of my outfits. I did her tiger outfit with the pants and the crop top. I was ready for the Soul Train line. <laughs> well, I had Bobcat with me because we were partnered at that time. And so I had Bobcat and he was so encouraging to me as a new dancer. My favorite Soul Train line coming down is I uh, have on a black and white, kind of shaggy dress at the bottom. It's kind of short and my hair is poofy. Everyone knows me from my high kicks. I could kick on both sides, very high and behind my head, and Don used to compliment me on it quite a bit. I wanted to be a rocket at one time, so <laughs> I uh, used to practice quite a bit when I was younger because I wanted to be able to do a high kick. Sometimes when I dance behind people and they didn't even know that I was there, like the show they did with Marvin Gaye, I knew Marvin, but I had never danced behind him or around him or anything. And to be in the cylinder cone and he was singing and they were shooting me behind him all the time, I thought it was just absolutely beautiful. I had a child, so dancing on the show and not being paid was not an issue for me because I didn't even know when I came on the show how those things worked. I was still working regular jobs and I started using my sewing as a craft in order to make money. And then I worked at the studios for a while as a dance instructor, Soul Train Dance Studios. Then Don started enhancing me with work outside of dancing on Soul Train, so that helped quite a bit. Don gave me a few opportunities which allowed me to travel around the world. 
First, I went to Japan and worked in a club in Kobe, Japan, called Central Pay. I was there for like three months as a nightclub act, and Don sent me to another audition for the Gwen Briscoe Show. That was run through Maverick Flats. I made the audition, and I traveled around the world with the Gwen Briscoe Show for three and a half years. I stopped dancing on the show because I wanted to come home to Kansas City and raise my daughter. And I didn't tell anybody. When I was around people, I never said anything about what I did or where I had been or anything like that when I came home to Kansas City. I can tell you right now, they don't know. I just never talked about it or told anybody once I came back home. I just went into mother mode, that's all. I love to dance and I was just so excited by the thought of being on Soul Train. That's why I showed up that weekend, just to think that I might be able to get on the floor and dance and just to be a part of the show and the atmosphere. Yes, I would do it all over again. It was exciting. It was opportunity. It was just so much. Most of all, it was fun. <laughs>